permitted at the moment. I, no, I, oh, I was just, oh, sorry. R I, no, Rubber, it's not, it's, I don't think it's to do with how close you are to the microphone. It's just... I, I think we've got a dodgy connection this end, I, think I can't do anything about it. I think the brilliant, and we are missing um, key words in the middle of your answer. So perhaps if we could pause there yep. and hope that the connection gets better. Okay, and sir. if if uh, if that's all right, Anthony, we will need to... Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. On thank to you. Stephen. Really so thank you very much for those questions. Stephen Kinnock. Unmute yourself, please. Sorry about that. There you uh, go. Yeah. Th thank you very much, and uh, um, many thanks to the panel for, for joining us uh, today. Um, I wanted to just focus on uh, the export side of this, so from GB to uh, EU. Um, and uh, one thing I just specifically wanted to ask about, I, I've read that uh, a part of the uh, process here would be to create a Kent access permit, uh, whereby uh, lorries in GB would only be allowed into Kent once they are border ready. Um, and if, if they uh, do get into Kent and uh, are discovered and it's discovered that they're not border ready, they could be subject to a £300 fine and potentially having their lorries impounded. Um, can you, uh, perhaps, um, perhaps Richard, could, could you just confirm that that is the case, that that actually is what the government will be doing? Well, I think we haven't got clarity on exactly how this is going to work yet. And again, it was one of the questions that was raised on a ministerial roundtable yesterday. Uh, to get further understanding of, of, of how this would work. Uh, you know, I think the industry as a whole is, is questioning how you would identify whether or not that was a vehicle going to Europe anyway, because you will have vehicles going into Kent, uh, you know, that, that are delivering domestic uh, goods anyway. So, so how you come up with some sort of passport or permit uh, and how that's going to be policed still hasn't been answered. But yes, this, you know, what they're saying at this point in time is the intention is to have uh, you know a fine in place, and that fine is likely to be an on-the-spot fine. But you know, let's let's come back to the detail again, which is 85% of, of the volume that comes in from Europe is on European vehicles, and therefore they are, they are going to be you know the line share going back are are, are effectively European operators. Um, you know, so you are going to be stopping Europe, European operators. You're going, to, you're going to have to find them on the spot somehow uh, and decide whether or not you're going to impound at that point in, in time. You know, so some, some of these processes are ill thought through, I would suggest, at this stage. Uh, and, you know, we go back to what's the root cause, what's the root cause of, of, of this, this happening. Uh, well, it comes back to customs intermediaries, it comes back to getting the paperwork ready. If you get the paperwork ready, we won't have this problem. But that's where the problem lies. So, you know, do you do you think it's do you think it's fair that uh, hauliers should be paying the price for uh, the lack of detail and information, uh, which is the foundation of the problem here? What, why why should hauliers be Penalized. potentially having their lorries impounded uh, when they don't have clarity in terms of the basic information? Do you think that's fair? I think I think what what you know, what governments are trying, I don't, think it, I don't think it is fair, by the way, but, but you know, I think what governments are trying to do is they're trying to stop mm -hmm. from going to Kent to create chaos. Uh, I, I, I understand that principle, but, but you know, what we have to do is we have to put processes in place that actually solve the problem. Uh, and, and what we've been saying is, what's going to fine you know, over the last three years, but certainly at the beginning of this year when we were meeting, was we need to increase the number of customs intermediaries to be able to solve that problem. But, but, you know, Stephen, no, it, it's not the right approach. And I, I don't think it, it necessarily will solve the problem. And the offices of departure may well have to be, uh, you know, um, a solution to actually taking that problem away from Kent. But again, we need to understand how the, those are going to operate and understand government's thinking, and we still don't. Thank you very much. Um, maybe... Uh uh, Robert, on uh, the training uh, issue, is, is it just, um, are we talking here just about customs agents and facilitators need, that need training, or are there other key players that are going to need training here, for example, even the drivers of lorries? Uh, it would just be useful to get a sense of the 
the overall training requirements and what the gap is in, in terms of both numbers of people that need training, types of people that need training, and if you like, the person years that we may need in terms of getting that, getting a fully, uh, getting people up to full capacity. Uh, thanks, Stephen. Hopefully my internet will hold up. Um, yeah. We've got a lot of IT work going on at the moment. Um, training worries me is that the, there is some very, very good customs training through the UK Customs Academy. Um, uh, there's also people going out there buying the software and saying, I've now got the custom software. But buying a cookbook doesn't make you a Michelin-starred chef. It just means you've got a cookbook. Okay? And the, one of the biggest areas that we spend a lot of time in training, which is with hauliers, with ferry operators, with ports, is, is the sequencing of events. Is, is just as important as the knowledge of what those processes are. So the, uh, the, G, the hip bone is connected to the thigh bone stuff, you know, is that you must have a GBMS, you must have a GMR, you must have it in this place at this time or it's not happening. Uh, we spend a lot of time doing that. Look, look, I take the point about, you know, it's not the, the poor driver's uh, responsibility to have the correct documentation and, and he doesn't know whether it's correct or not. He's given a packet of stuff uh, and he just hopes it's good. The, the, the issue is, is that we don't want the vehicle to be sent back. And the only way they can do that is to, is to sort of force a, a process in there that makes sure that doesn't happen. I, my argument is I think the GMR is that process. We've already got a process. We don't need smart freight as well, uh, which is a, a, a bit of an oxymoron, really. So it's, it's, a, it's not a process that, that particularly solves anything. But option one on smart freight is are you empty? Yes. OK, you're good to go. That'll do me. <laughs> so. We originally said, well, everyone's empty. Uh, because, and they said, oh, they won't do that. <laughs> well, they will do. You know, a, a trucking company, but with the greatest respect to trucking companies, they will go for the path of least resistance. That's how, that's how they operate. And if you can press a button that gets you a, a Kent access permit, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. So, the, yeah. yes, the, there is, there's an awful lot of training required at all levels, but it's not the same training. It is sequencing of events is more important. Thank you very much. Anna, I, I see you'd like to uh, come in there. I also wanted to ask you, you've mentioned uh, this IT issue a number of times. My understanding is that, the, that uh, hauliers are going to need to navigate 10 different IT systems. Is, is that right? And, and uh, do you think it's, it's feasible to get people trained up and understanding 10 different IT systems? But please also do come in on the point you wanted to make, etc. Thank you. Um, I obviously agree with Robert. Just wanted to make a distinction because I don't think um, this is necessarily understood. What Robert said about um, training people in sequencing, what happens at the border, what the processes are, that's one area where we need training. But what Robert mentioned and Richard mentioned earlier about customs data, the data that uh, needs to go into all these forms and systems and so on, that is another area where we need training. Every element of, the, of this data set is something that is governed by international rules, by customs rules, and that also requires training. And that's also a type of training where you need experience, not only um, classroom training, but you actually need experience. So these, these are two separate areas that both require uh, some experience and, and a lot of training. On the IT systems, yes, that's, that's one of, um, that's one of my, my um, main concerns at the moment. We've heard about these 10 IT systems. I'm not necessarily sure what well, the 10 are, I know that there are the two systems, the GBMS and the uh, Simplify uh, Smart Freight uh, Service. Uh, there, there is a new system for um, SPS requirements. There is obviously the new system for Northern Ireland. Um, and, and there's supposedly a couple of more uh, in addition to all the systems that are already used, like port uh, management systems and so on. Um, the problem is that a lot of them don't exist. Um, as, as Richard said, we, we've not seen them. We don't know what their func functionality will be. Training people to use systems is one issue. And yes, as you, as you pointed out, that's going to be a problem. Uh, that might, there might not be enough time to get everyone on board. It needs to be, uh, depending who the users need to be. But the another thing is, we, we all know how systems work. Uh, we all know how systems, how long systems take to, to, to develop. We've all heard of large government IT uh, projects and they just, they, I mean, there are going to be delays. I mean, that's not, that's not being um, very negative about the whole process. It's just there are going to be delays. That's how 
large that's project. The that's the reality. Yeah. That's the reality yeah. of it. Yeah. Uh, and having a backup for for a for an IT system being another IT system that's possibly simpler because the smart freight service is supposed to be a web portal, but it's nonetheless something that needs to be designed. Someone needs to scope it. Someone needs to test it. Needs to test it, uh, and so and so on. So that's definitely uh, an issue. And not having. Um, backup systems that would, would allow to, to uh, this process to function if there's no, uh, if there's no uh, readiness for the 1st of, of January. So yeah, the right. IT system is definitely, uh, definitely so, an issue. Thank you. I, I just had what, one question to all of you uh, then as my final question. It's a, a little bit of an unfair one, but uh, this, this, these three words, chaos in Kent, have been mentioned uh, by, by you here on the panel today. Um, it, if I, I know it's very unfair to do this, but if you were to sort of say there's from from zero percent chance of chaos in Kent from the first of January, being it, it's going to be fine, through to one hundred percent chance that there is going to be chaos in Kent from the first of January, what what ranking would you give for, from naught to a hundred in terms of the percentage chance that we're going to have chaos in Kent from the from the 1st of January 2021. Uh, uh, Richard, I saw you wanted to come in and say something else. Uh, do, do, do that, but if you could give me your percentage, that would be very helpful as well. Uh, of course, so, so, so I just wanted to you know, talk about training very, very briefly and just say, look, you know, in my career, I've run lots of logistics operations and I've had complement systems. And you know, when I've implemented SAP, for instance, as a, uh, as a system, it's taken two years in the making and that's about a business business change process. And what we're going through here is a business change process, but on a scale like we've never seen before. So where you go through those different handshakes and you train the individuals and you understand the system functionality and you have super users that then go and train people and train the trainer and then train other people, we haven't got that infrastructure here to be able to naturally train out effectively what we, what we need to do. So the Jimmy, scale Jimmy, of it in the time that we've got is a challenge. Um, in terms of my gut feeling as we stand here today with 81 days to go with the amount of work that we've got to undertake, um, chaos in Kent, 80-20 for potential. If, if business- 80% chance. Yeah, yeah. yeah because, because if business, if businesses try to dispatch because they haven't got customs agents to do the paperwork, then, then the chances are they're gonna still wanna trade. They're still gonna wanna you know, dr drive volume there. Um, and if we're not ready, then, then the likelihood is we, you know, we will have chaos. Thank you. Uh, Robert? Chaos Register. Oh, it's really yeah. unfair, Stephen. It's really unfair. I'm, I'm a Kent guy, you know, and uh, um, look, the people in Kent are worried. Um, <clears throat> I think it's got a huge potential for, for delays. It's, it's more than 50-50 at the moment. That It's more than 50% chance that we delays in Kent. I'm not sure whether the, I know the alliteration of chaos in Kent is, is more, is nicer, but I'm not, I'm not sure it's chaotic, but it's, um, it's not good, and, and, the, and the fear is that that snarls up uh, domestic traffic that's delivering or collecting in Kent. It also snarls up the empty trucks that are going back, uh, and it also snarls up the prepared. Is that the, the I, I kind of agree that there has to be some um, penalty or some, uh, some cost of not being prepared, because that's the only way you come back next time prepared. So if, if somebody isn't prepared, then we can probably live with that. Um, but it's snarling up the, the prepared ones, I think, is a really sad. Thank sorry. you. And then finally, just to Anna, what, what would your estimate be? Yeah, I would say probably 70, 70, 80 percent, I, I would agree, oh. uh, at but, least short term, because that, that's that the thing is, uh, as, as Robert said, businesses will find a way to trade. They will find a way of least resistance. And once uh, penalized, they will probably come back second time ready but for in, in in short term the first couple of weeks that, that that's definitely very likely okay Great. thank you very